Hey guys, how you going? So today marks five weeks since I got my shoe place and I thought I'd give you guys an update. I know there's a lot of you who are following me, especially friends and family who want to keep updated with my progress and how I'm going. And so I thought I'd give an update and I thought this could also be useful for those of you who might be looking into getting a tube or about to get a tube that my experience might be helpful to you. So I got the tube place endoscopically uh, five weeks ago and um, at the time I got it placed it was very painful in my nose in my throat and all the way down to my chest and stomach like basically everywhere the tube was it was painful and it did take probably a good two weeks until it wasn't so painful to talk I really didn't vlog much at all in those first two weeks because it was just so painful to talk and that was kind of hard for me because I am someone who likes to talk and it was hard just not being able to talk to my husband. If I really had to talk I would whisper but it was just so sore in my throat that it was hard to talk. Um, so I started on 20 mils per hour which is very a small rate of formula and my goal rate is about 75 to 80 mils an hour and I was actually going fairly good with that and so I upped my dose a little bit and then a little bit more and I was going okay with that. So I got too excited and upped my dose too much too quickly and it didn't go that well for me. What can happen when somebody starts on formula is, especially if they're quite underweight or malnourished at the time, is that when all of a sudden the body starts getting electrolytes and nutrition because the formula is very concentrated what can happen is that this can actually disturb the fluid balance in the body and the body be can become dehydrated and this is called refeeding syndrome so usually when someone goes on a feeding tube they're in hospital for a while because as they're like as they're upping their dose um, if they're at really high risk of refeeding syndrome so if they're very malnourished or very underweight um, because this can be very serious and life-threatening even so if you do feel like you have symptoms of this this is something you need to be aware of and it is serious so if you do you need to go to hospital you need to talk to your doctor um, so I didn't actually think this would happen to me because I had been on formula for over a year beforehand. When I first went on formula it took me several months to up to the dose that I needed. Um, I had to go really really slow and that was incredibly hard. Like I remember back to those few months that I first went on the formula and it was really really hard. Um, I was just very weak, very exhausted, um, and really quite sick. But at that time, I was very underweight. I I hadn't been eating. I had been basically living off soaking plain potato chips because, with a combination of my issues with my stomach as well as my mast cell disease and amine and salicylate sensitivity, that's all I could eat. Uh, the plain potato chips chips so when I first went on the formula I did up my dose to my goal dose and I was on that for a while and that was the best time in the whole last almost seven years that I have been at my worst uh, when I was on that full amount and <laughs> that was amazing but I could not tolerate that for long very quickly my stomach issues just started to go downhill and throughout this year, 2020, 2020, um, my, I just could tolerate less and less and less until by the time I was on the tube, I was only tolerating about an, one ninth of the amount of formula that I needed. So that's why we got the tube because every time I, at the time I had to just sip the formula slowly throughout the day 
and just every time I slit, sipped it'd be incredibly painful and I'd feel very nauseous and they suspected that's from a condition called MALS. My cognitive issues are quite prominent at the moment they're not as severe as they can be, but I am really struggling to talk, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so I didn't actually think I would have a major issue with refeeding because I had been on the formula beforehand, but <laughs> apparently I was wrong. And so the first symptoms I got were major, major headaches, like very, very severe headaches. Um, and high blood pressure. High blood pressure for me, it wasn't necessarily high for someone else, but when you look at what my normal is, it was definitely high. And, um, so, and my doctor said it was high for me. At that point, I hadn't talked to my doctor yet, and I just, um, I mentioned this on Instagram when I gave a four-week update that I really really reduced my feeds and actually stopped my feeds and just went ran water throughout the night and luckily my symptoms did start to calm down i naturally avoid hospitals and doctors because in the past i've had really bad experiences and been told my issues are psychosomatic and found it really not very helpful and I wasn't able to get the help that I need so it was pointless for me to go and now that I'm in this community of people with EDS that experience is not uncommon pretty much everyone that I have come across has had years and years of experiences like that when they've been told that they're what they're experiencing is psychosomatic and and just being treated really really poorly. Looking back I definitely should have just gone to the hospital because yeah I should have gone to the hospital. I'm lucky that things got better. The headache, the very severe headache lasted about a week and I also had very very severe exhaustion. I was very weak. This started a while before the headaches. I'm not sure how long but a little while. It's, it's hard looking back on it all because time kind of all like molds together. My POTS symptoms really accelerated. I had quite a high heart rate. I had palpitations. I had a lot of like fluttering and that feeling of dropping of your heart when it just kind of drops. Um, and yeah, so I, that lasted probably altogether three weeks and maybe a little bit more and it's kind of just been easing this week but I'm still feeling very exhausted I'm still having quite a bit of pain in my throat like I'm still having some days where it's well I'm having times during the day and some whole days where it's very very painful to swallow, it's very painful to talk and it's as if it feels like when you have tonsillitis and if you look at this tube like it is actually pretty thick so I'm thinking maybe for me it's too thick like if you look at that even against my arm this is my elbow here like that's actually really quite thick and that's in my throat so I think what happens is sometimes, especially if this moves a little bit, sometimes when it's taped and it's like st stays here, sometimes it can like come out of the, the nose here a little bit and curl a bit here. And I think what happens is that it curls like in the throat a little bit. And sometimes I can fix that by like swallowing really hard or by kind of like jerking the top of the tube like this a little um, which actually makes me gag but um, or um, kind of massaging it a bit with my hands but other times there's nothing I can do to kind of get it to go straight and I, I feel it sitting like this in my throat 
which is really really painful like it feels like as if when you graze your knee and then you've got like a piece of material like rubbing on the graze because every time you breathe or talk the tube is moving like this in your throat and so if you have something rubbing against the side of your throat like this all the time it gets really sore and it it's really really sore and I'm starting to feel, because I'm starting to feel a lot better physically and I'm starting to feel stronger, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting over this hump of that, just that really rough time that I had with the um, struggle with the formula. Um, so I did end up going to the doctor about a week after my headaches, after my headaches had been really bad for about a week. I definitely should have gone earlier, so keep that in mind. He told me about the electrolyte balance, how the fluid flips in the body and um, all of that. So he's done a blood test and I haven't got the results yet. I'm going to talk to him. But I was really grateful because he was like, he said that he wants to do bloods at least once a month. And that he wants to talk to me at least once a week at the moment. Um, even if I'm not sick so that he can get to know my case really really well and um, so that we can kind of stay ahead of EDS a little bit so that we can kind of look at what's the next thing to tackle what's the next thing we need to do and be more proactive and preventative instead of always chasing behind and I was so grateful for that because I've never really been offered that before and it was just so good and the reason why I ended up going to the doctor was actually because my throat and my ears were so sore. And I thought my ears were so sore just from the inflammation in my throat referring to my ears. But, and, and the doctor said that can happen, but I thought I'd better go in because to make sure that my ears um, weren't infected and they ended up being infected so both of them were infected and my throat is likely to be infected as well and so that's why I actually went into the doctor and you know that's when he said about the refeeding issues so I've just had antibiotic ear drops in my ears at the moment and I've been gargling with salt water and lemon juice to try and settle down the throat as best as I can so I can avoid going on oral antibiotics and so far Things have gotten better, like they got better in the first couple of days, but they've kind of just plateaued and stayed in this, like, this level where my ears are still really sore, my throat's still really sore, but it's not necessarily getting worse. So I'm just going to keep going with this treatment, even though it's not necessarily getting better, and just see how it goes, because I don't really want to go on antibiotics. But it has been a week now since I went to the doctor, so we'll, <laughs> we'll just have to see what happens. I've also found that... The throat gets more painful when I have my neck brace on so it must like either constrict the throat a little bit so there's less room for the tube or it might push it to one way I'm really not sure now that I'm starting to get over that hub <coughs> sorry sometimes I often <laughs> randomly gag on my tube and it's something that my husband and I have just gotten used to now that in the middle of talking or just I'll just wake up and gag or I'll just like randomly gag on my tube and actually something you might want to note when you first get in your tube for the first like few days and nights my body was just constantly trying to throw up the tube and sneeze out the tube um, so that's something to be aware of, but it's still just... It still just randomly gags every now and then. <laughs> yeah, so something I said on Instagram that I was really, really thankful for is that I'm learning to trust again now that I'm getting a team of doctors and medical professionals and specialists and hospitals around me who I can trust and who are who can help me and who are helping me and invested in my care and um, I'm just so incredibly grateful for that but I wanted to be real with you guys and tell you that these last especially these last four weeks they've been really 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 hard and these last two or three weeks in particular 
I have just felt like I'm on the edge of tears all the time. Um, and I really do feel like I'm on the end of my rope. And it's not because I'm going through something harder than what I've been through before in the last, you know, six and a half years. When I've been, when I hit my worst about six and a half years ago. Because I've definitely been through way worse things and I've been through years of worse things. But it's just that I've been going through it for so long and that there are so many things. Like you guys with chronic illness and especially those with EDS will understand this. That it's never just one thing that's falling apart. It's always... It's always multiple things, and what I mean by that is we're damaging controlling my stomach, we're, dam we're dam damaging controlling, we're, dam we're doing damage control on my stomach by um, putting a feeding tube in, and that's things that I've struggled with for years um, until I got to the point where I was really underweight, and I did that, I wanted the tube as a kind of a proactive measure. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted the tube as kind of a proactive measure because I was only tolerating one ninth of my formula and I didn't want to get to where I had been before when I was so underweight and weak and sick and um, so we were doing damage control of that. I needed the tube to be able to try and tolerate more formula but at the same time in the last, you know, six weeks, I have been getting MRIs, I have been seeing brain and spine surgeon, there's just so many different things. I've been trying to see a physio to stop the rest of my body from falling apart because I have hypermobility, I'm trying to manage my pain that I've had for years, mostly in my neck, my jaw, my back, my hips. Or you had to get fitted for a neck brace and it's just I'm trying to control my pots and take control of my mast cells and so it's never just one thing and it's always difficult because when you're trying to fix one thing it can affect the other things and like one thing might help one thing but it makes other things worse so it's just very difficult to be dealing with that all the time and it's like our lives are just this literally just this 24 7 of kind of just damage control and trying to survive and it can be really hard and we're trying to find out what's going on not just with one part of our body, like my stomach, but in several parts, like my brain, my spine, my my pots, my everything else. So, um, it's just, it's very hard and it can feel very overwhelming at times. And so this Sunday just gone, I had more MRIs. I had MRIs on my brain and on my spine with contrast. Yeah, so I've, I've just been feeling like I was at the end of my rope because I've just been going and going and going for the last six and a half years and even before that six and a half years was when I hit my worst but even before that all through my teen years I was sick of being sick like I remember just being so frustrated and telling my family I'm sick of being sick all the time before I even hit my worst and so and I'm not unique in this this is this is a pattern that many people with EDS follow and that you're just working so hard all the time on whatever treatment, whatever therapies, whatever it is that you're going through, even though it's just so difficult and even though it can be so hard on the body and you can be sick for ages and the treatments can be difficult, you persist with them because I've known that it can help me in the long run and I felt overwhelmed when the tube was just another one of those things that I was having so many issues with, you know, tolerating the formula, with the tube hurting my throat, and I know that so many people have more issues, so I am grateful that I haven't had major 
issues with the tube you know flipping or going somewhere it shouldn't be and all those sorts of things but um I was just really overwhelmed by that and the thing that I've just kept telling myself is I will not give up 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 and I've literally just been repeating that in my head all day for the last few weeks and also just one step at a time one day at a time one step at a time one day at a time one step at a time one day at a time one thing at a time so right now I've literally just been doing the next thing that I need to do and it's been so overwhelming so I've written a list of to do and it's literally a few pages long because people who aren't sick don't know that illness is literally a full-time job and you can spend hours and hours and hours doing the equivalent of what if my illness was a business you'd call it like admin work because it just takes so much so much work to do um, and I won't go into that now for the sake of time but yeah I just wanted to share that with you I wanted to be real I hope it's encouraging with for you it's also getting really hot here in Australia um, and that of course is very difficult when you have dysautonomia with heat intolerance and we live in the country and we don't have simple access to air conditioning. Uh, I hope this video ended up being okay. I'm really sorry I'm a bit all over the place. But I just wanted to try and be real with you guys and share with you things. So feel free to let me know in the comments how you're going. And I'm cheering for you guys. And I hope you have a good week. Bye.